Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, this radio station will remain on the air day and night. I feel like the sun brings out my manly beard, John. Just, it, it, it looks very red. Very red in the sun is what I'll say. It does look very red. You mm. definitely have a chromosome issue that... Uh, I got, a, I got a touch of the ginge. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do we got today? Oh, we were on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you know I like to do this, DJ. <laughs> I got to turn gotcha. the speaker down. Got the <laughs> thing. Uh, okay. So we recently did some Jethro Tall, which you seem to be enjoying the Jethro Tall. What mm-hmm. was the one we did recently? My God, I believe, was uh, the mm-hmm, most recent mm-hmm. Jethro Tall. We've done Songs from the Wood, which you very much enjoyed. I loved Songs from the Wood. I've listened to that a couple, probably four or five times since we've done that video. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, I'm glad you're liking this music, really. I mean, there's nothing not to like. I yeah. Well, um, there so... was a few not to like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Primus. I get it. <laughs> um, but when we did the last of uh, Jethro Tull, they were immediately jumping in. Mark S., Jeff Hoff, Ian Park, others were saying, I want to hear his take on the lyrics to Thick as a Brick. And this is pretty cool because... <laughs> I have no idea (laughs) what the lyrics are to Thick as a Brick. Thick as a Brick? (laughs) Yeah, that's the song. And this was a mild hit, a modest pop hit in the United States. Okay. So, And I've I've heard this song, again, since the 70s I've been hearing this song, and I really have no clue what it's about specifically. I can sing the the Thick as a Brick. I can sing that part there, but I really search in my head and cannot come with any explanation. So I'm resting on your red beard today for the answers. Well, we'll see how this works out. <laughs> All right. Thick as a brick. That's fun. This is part one. Does that matter? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. It's 22 minutes long, John. What's happening here? You've been Jethro told. I've been Jethro told. I've been bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see an awful lot of the sun changing direction during this song. All right, here we go. We'll do time lapse. <laughs> Think it's a brick. Oh. Really don't mind if you sit this one out. Oh, yeah, the flute. My words, but a whisper, your deafness, a shout. I may make you feel that I can't make you think. This is one of my favorite tall songs. Your sperm's in the gutter, your love's in the sink. <laughs> so you're right. I, ne- I never knew those words. The fields, and you make all your animal deals, and your wise men. Thick as a brick. <laughs> it's about jocks. And the sand castle virtues are all swept away. In the tidal destruction, the moral malay. The elastic retreat rings the clothes of play. As the last wave uncovers the new fangled way But your new shoes are worn at the heels And your suntan was wrapped in peel And your wise men don't know how it feels To be thick as a brick So far away, I'm a bad dream that I just had today. And you shake your head and said it's a shame. (laughs) 
Spin me back down the years and the days of my youth Draw the lace and black curtains and shut out the whole truth Spin me down the long ages, let them sing the song this a different song or this is all just thick as a brick it's like one of those multi-part things well now i'll let you in wait a minute i'll let you in on uh one of the little secrets i've kept from you uh we discussed at some length uh, after the last uh, uh jethro tall reaction that he was rather <clears throat> affronted at the idea that he had written a concept album with aqua oh yeah and so then as a joke he went and wrote a concept album. <laughs> this is the concept album, side one and side two are all thick as a brick, parts one, two, three, four, whatever, uh, wow. continuing on and on. Here's a quote. Uh, he remarked that the album is a bit of a satire about the whole concept of grand rock-based concept albums. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, he, he says this, this album is to rock concept albums as airplane is to airport interesting i get yeah i get that as an airplane like the spoof comedy yes yeah uh, airplane is a, a fantastic spoof comedy a movie if you've never seen it uh, and it, it's a spoof of a series of films called airport airport 70 whatever airport 78 or whatever which i've uh, never seen involved. any of those but i have seen right. airplane well it was basically basically the same movie only with no comedy mm, <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> seems like a boring movie yeah Man, okay. Interesting. All right, well, I, I have some theories so far, but um, I almost feel like, I, given that, he sort of wrote these lyrics a bit as a joke, which makes well, me even more interested in it. <laughs> he, he, people have said the humor in it was subtle enough that fans believed that it was, that it was legit and real. So he does follow, I guess, a theme throughout. So there's, there's seriousness to that part of it, but... Uh, uh, most people miss the joke, and I have to say, I'm, I'm apparently one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if I am or not. Here we go.
painter Casting shadows on the water As the sun plays on the infantry Returning from the sea The doer and the thinker No allowance for the other As the failing light illuminates The mercenary's creed A bonfire burning The kettle almost boiling But the master of the house Is far away The forest he is stamping
give it a quick break before we into the next section. Let me say some things that I've been chuckling at. Okay. So <laughs> this this last verse, especially the first verse, now that I look back on it, absolutely as well. This is written like you sat down and you said, what is the heady thing in all good music that is like long form? And then you just started throwing out like word cloud ideas, like those stupid word clouds I like to do in board meetings where right. you're like, well, you need water. Uh, so we're going to need uh, seas and rivers and uh, some sort of brooks, sp springs. Uh, they just named all the waters. Uh, we're going to need... Fighting. Okay, you got to have fighting in there. Okay, we'll have a soldier. Oh, you, you got to have a beautiful love poetry. Okay, we'll have a poet. Uh, and if you start looking through it, it's literally just like every trope that you can imagine has just been shoehorned in, in a good way. Like, it's not even it was poorly done or anything, but that is what this appears to be. And it, and it really keeps making me chuckle if you start thinking about it in those terms like you sat yeah. down and said yeah. well what's in everything and then you just wrote the song that contained all of the tropes yeah as i'm reading more and more about this as we're going through this uh what i think is hilarious is they intended to create a spoof they intended to sort of poke fun at emerson lake and palmer and yeah i could absolutely and, see it yeah and yes and all that stuff but reading it the band themselves said you know, this is one of the best experiences we had as a band making a record. And as a listener and as a person who enjoys the music style, I have to say they put together some great interludes between the yeah. lyrics. Yeah, the, and the lyrics, they aren't bad. They're just, like, very generic. Uh, but I think almost in a comedy way. Like, it keeps making me chuckle. They're so well done generic, you know? Um, yeah. But the music has been so engaging, and I, I gotta say, I'm a huge sucker for the flute. Like, that's a huge part of it for me with Jethro well, Tull. Listen carefully, because in the overdubs, they recorded the whole the whole album in basically a couple of weeks, but the overdubs took a little bit longer. Mm. And in the overdubs, you're going to be hearing, um, well, the basics. You'll hear the flute, acoustic, and electric guitars, and the Hammond organ, of course, and the drums. That's the regular band. Mm -hmm. But you'll also hear harpsichord, glockenspiel, timpani, violin, lute. Mm -hmm. trumpet, saxophone, and a string section. So this is a major departure for Jethro Tull from their beginnings as a blues band. Mm. Yeah, I've heard a ton of interesting stuff going on in this piece so far, uh, and it's been a blast. But yeah, John, as we go on, start to think of the lyrics as a parody of every single trope you can think I'm of. I'm seeing the tropes. I almost yeah. hate to do it because it feels like, I feel, I feel like I just got fooled, you know, my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but in a fun way. And now you can be yeah. in on the joke, which I think is going right. to be part of the fun from this point forward. So, uh, yeah. all right, let's get back to it. What do you do when the old man's gone? Do you want to be him? And your real self say the song.
fun? Bye. 
I can smell the humor. Ending. Yeah, I can smell the humor at that point. You know, where maybe they each other go, well, we've got two and a half minutes <laughs> on this side of the album. What do we do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're still going? I think that's the Well, now we got wind. Because it's over and they've, they're admitting that they're just blowing hot air. <laughs> You know what's fun is I don't know if those are chirping birds for me or for the song. <laughs> uh, well then, well then, John. First well then. of all, snookered me right into a twenty-two and a half minute long song. Didn't see that yeah. coming. Probably I should look that, alert you to it. <laughs> probably should have looked that link you sent me. <laughs> now you're untrustworthy. Uh, okay, so musically that was a blast i i would almost say whimsical like i i think there's a level there where whimsical is almost the correct term uh which is fascinating to me and it was fun from start to finish um the finish a little bit long but i i honestly think that is part of the joke that the finish was a little long so it sure. doesn't make me upset like it doesn't bother me that, that the finish was a little long because i think that really is part of the joke uh the lyrics I think we're predominantly a joke, but then sort of reached this point where it started as writing a joke and then ended up being kind of really good. And I think they, they hit that weird plateau level, uh, which is such a strange point to be at. And I think a part of that comes from just being extremely skilled. They're extremely gifted. They're talented and they're well-practiced. This is not their first go around at writing an album. They sat around together and they wrote a good album. And whether it was meant to be a joke or not, at the end of the day, they wrote a good album. And so I don't mind if it's a joke. And to me, that almost makes it funnier. Uh, it's like when you see a, a comedic actor take on a serious role and it turns out they're really good at it. And it's because comedy is hard. I think we almost saw a little bit of a reverse here. We saw excellent musicians, good lyricists who sat down to write a joke and then ended up writing a good album. And I think that's exactly what this sort of ended up being. Yeah, and the joke I, was on them uh, yeah. completely. <laughs> and the jokes, they're welcome to put more jokes on me because that was a blast and I want more of that. Uh, and from what I've seen, there's another side. I assume anyway, there's part one. So I assume there's a part yeah, two. Yeah, we, we've only seen the beginning of this uh, story of a character. What was his name? Gerald Bostock. Bostock Gerald. Whatever. Gerald Bostock. Bostock. But anyway, yeah, jokes on them. Uh, this uh, album um, went to number one in the United States, Canada, and Australia. And it hit the top five in the UK. Okay, fair um, enough. It's a certified gold record in the US. That's half a million copies. And that was the year it was introduced. It sold okay. a half a million Oh, copies. that's fun. I mean, yeah. that's um, What does that say? They put out a good record. They really mm -hmm. did. Now, granted, um, it's kind of like having a sitcom that premieres after Happy Days in the 70s. You know, <laughs> okay, they're almost yeah, guaranteed fair. a certain amount of viewership because of the success of Aqualung and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, if it was crap, it wouldn't have sold half a million copies in mm -hmm. the U.S. Yeah. You know? Uh, so it isn't crap. It's really well done. And mm -hmm. like I said, I started to tell you the band experienced uh, enjoyment in the process. Uh, here's here's what I'm learning about the process, and I didn't know this until now. But uh, normally, when they went into the studio, Ian Anderson came in with all his songs for the record. Really? This time, the whole first side was not even started until they got into rehearsals. Oh, wow. So they wrote the whole first side of this album basically from scratch. Uh, Ian Anderson would wake up in the morning early. He would start working on the, the musical parts. When the band eventually came into the studio, he would teach them their part for that day, and they would throw their ideas back and forth, and then they would lay it down. That's impressive. That's <laughs> really <laughs> cool. Yeah, and with a brand new drummer who just joined the band on this album. The old drummer left, and the new drummer came in. So uh, it is pretty amazing, and, and you got to wonder what that recording... I wish that, you know... <laughs> Some bands, uh, Yes did it for one of their albums. Uh, I forget which album, maybe Tormato. Um, the Rolling Stones did it uh, um, for an album or two. The Who did it for Who's Next, I think. But I would love if these bands would 
just assume you're going to put out an epic album that's going to be listened to for a hundred years and bring the, the cameras into the recording studio for goodness sake if nothing <laughs> else you know what's the cost per, compared to what the potential benefit is 30 years later when you say oh by the way we recorded those sessions <laughs> You know, and for for a mere hundred and ninety nine ninety nine, yeah, uh, four month, easy payments, you get, yeah, <laughs> you can get, you know, you you can get literally four to six weeks worth of viewing as we put these albums together. It would blow people's minds. I think it would also uh, result in a ton of terrible wasted footage from bands that made a terrible album but recorded the whole process <laughs> you gotta roll the dice you gotta roll the dice man you just don't know i don't think the band had great expectations for this but when it when it came out and when when it had the success it, it did have guess what they toured with it and did both sides in a row on I, tour that'd be a blast of a concert and they added humor, of course. Well, I mean, I think they added humor in the song. <laughs> so, but I think adding I extra humor would be you know, would make for a more entertaining show as a whole. In, in 1973, when they're touring this, the, at the start of the show, men wearing capes would appear on stage and <laughs> sweep the floor. And they'd be counting the audience. And then they would shed their capes, and it's them. It's the band, and they just start playing. <laughs> um, uh, That's good. Then, That's good. Yeah. During, it says, during some shows, the entire band stopped mid-performance when a telephone rang on stage, uh, which Anderson would answer uh, before carrying on the performance. Uh, they would read news and weather reports halfway through because of the length of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know what's going on outside here tonight. Yeah, uh, yeah that makes a lot of sense. Uh, anyway, it's hilarious. Uh, at, at one point, they had a scuba diver outfit, guy in a scuba diver outfit coming on stage. I mean... <laughs> They, they had I, I fun with they the fun. It. Yeah, they yeah. embraced it. They said, you know what? We're going to have fun. We had fun making this album. We're going to have fun showing you this album. Playing and it they were all you. fans of Monty Python. That makes a lot of sense. And, and I will say, I think uh, my supposition was pretty spot on as we went further on. It really did keep feeling like they were like, okay, well, now we have to have a verse about um, old age and the passage of time. What do we got here? Okay, now we have to have a verse about... <laughs> Like it, it just kept and you know, going with every trope. Also, what I hear is I just said something clever, so let's put a musical break here so that we can give them time to process mm -hmm. that last thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's funny, but it's also well done, like you say. Well done. Um, I still don't know what the story's about. Even after reading all those lyrics, I still don't completely understand. Uh, what I'm reading here online is that uh, this this guy, this kid, who they're singing about is an eight-year-old genius. Clive, no, wait a minute, that's the old drummer. I mean, <laughs> the old drummer. <laughs> yeah, well, there were yeah. allusions to that. I mean, the whole thing opened up with "You guys are idiots." You're, you know, thick as a brick. You're idiots. Uh, and then we have this boy who was raised to be smart. We're going to teach him to be smart, even when he's young. Uh, but then allusions to, you know, a lot of different interesting things like maybe he's going to be a poet maybe he's going to go to war but maybe he's going to do all sorts of things uh but he's certainly not going to take too much wisdom from this old guy he's going to take some but, but then that old guy's kind of crotchety too it has a lot of ups and downs and then at the end they're just like i don't know just make superman president and we'll be fine <laughs> which so uh, they were... go ahead I was going to say, it makes a lot of sense reading comic books, you know, a child reading comic books and saying, why isn't Superman president? Like, it's kind of dumb that he's flying around doing stuff and then being angry at politicians. I've thought that with Batman, too. Batman's a billionaire, and his problem is corrupt politicians. They're corrupt, and you have money. Just pay them off to write good policies, and they'll do it because they're corrupt, and your problem is solved. Like, I've always thought that about Batman. He's kind of dumb when you think about it. Anyway, mm -hmm. sorry. Go on. I digress. Anyway. My nerddom digresses. Uh, yeah, but he was he was sick. Depending on which version of Batman you believe, um, mm. the uh, the original packaging for the album was designed as a twelve page newspaper, and it claims that the album to be a musical adaptation of an epic poem by fictional eight year old genius <laughs> Gerald Bostock. <laughs> That's pretty solid. That like a joke within a joke. Right. Um. To, no surprise, Rolling Stone gave the progressive album two stars out of five. Mm -hmm, that seems right. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> seems like a Rolling Stone. That's Stone's. one point yeah. with them. Yeah, that seems right. 
Uh, uh, but later, of course, in retrospect, when the when time says you were wrong, Rolling Stones, they finally go, well, maybe we were wrong. <laughs> um, maybe. And now they now they give it a four stars out of five. Okay, okay. I like the retconning there. I mean, we've yeah. all done it. I've I've hated things and then later liked them. I can't, you know, knock them too bad, but. <laughs> But that was fun. Like, why would you not like that? I don't get it. I don't get a lot of reviewers in general. I, I most of the time, just sort of enjoy things. So right. uh, either way, I've been bamboozled, and I've enjoyed it from start to finish. Okay. <laughs> so well so done. we don't know what playlist might this appear on some days. This a Oh, man. I mean, this is probably. No, I think this is just the normal playlist. Like, it's just fun. Okay. If it came on, I'd just enjoy it. I'd let it play through. Uh, certainly mm. couldn't pay attention the whole time. 22 and a half minutes long. <laughs> But I would definitely just enjoy the journey because that's definitely what the song is. It's a, a fun journey. So, uh, well, well, like me, you'd probably learn the only hook in the first mm -hmm. side, which is basically the thick as a brick part at the beginning. Yeah, probably. And then not be able to sing along with pretty much any of it, which uh, makes me like it even more. I like a chorusless song. I'm a fan of a chorusless yeah. song. So this is uh, once again in that sort of genre for me, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who suggested. Well, I guess we'll have to do part two at some point. Not today. Yeah, but you know uh, what? Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> That's the end?